What's up nerfers and welcome back to my channel where today I'm taking a look at a special gift sent to me thanks to the original creators of the inverted scales nerf AEG. They forwarded it through Phantom Toys here in Australia who won't actually be selling this particular kit. So if I do manage to find a link to it I'll put it down below but it will be in Chinese. Basically it's a standard 300 feet per second config inverted scales with a bunch of add-on parts turning it into a bullpup meaning the firing grip is further forward than the breech. Now, another question some of you have been asking is how Sabre's T darts would feed through a Nerf AEG, considering they're two mil longer than standard Nerf darts. So that's something I'll also test today. But first up, let's take a closer look at this bullpup conversion. Up front, I've attached a different AccuBlue B cutter test today. This one's the 15 bearing design, best suited for around 220 to 260. So lower velocities than last week's video on the 18. The 15 attaches the same though, using a threaded locking nut and has a full CNC metal construction and price wise it's a tiny bit cheaper than the 18 at 42 Singaporean dollars on Ideal Foam Blasters website. As usual I'll leave a link to that down below and we'll see how it performs later on in the accuracy test. Moving back from there I have a 35 centimeter aluminium barrel installed and then we come to what actually makes this a bullpup. The trigger has been rewired to the front. And there's even a mechanical trigger safety above it. There's a spot at the front to rest your offhand on a grip and your trigger hand has an overabundance of room on what I'd have to call the largest main grip I've ever seen. It's completely hollow inside so I'm not sure why they made it Hagrid sized. It's also a little square and blocky on the edges but overall it's not the worst grip I've seen. The mag goes in the usual spot for the inverted scales using the same original paddle mag release. Above that on the left hand side of the blaster there's a grey wiring channel concealing that wire that leads from the trigger back to the rear of the bluster. Up top they've added a large CNC metal Picatinny riser which simply attaches to the original Picatinny rail underneath. With the way you hold this blaster now with the conversion kit installed I think it definitely does make sense to have your sight a bit higher. Plus this riser can act as a little bit of a carry handle. Behind that at the back of the blaster there's a cheek riser that looks like it's designed for something to slot inside. I didn't get anything included with it but maybe there's some rubber cheek pads that just slot in there. I'm not too sure on that one. And then aside from the uh, grip at the front that makes this a bullpup, the next biggest change they've made is at the bottom of the blaster there's a massive grey piece that covers the original trigger guard and the grip becoming the new stock of the blaster. Because the grip is still actually inside of that, there's not as much battery space as you'd expect looking at it from the outside. So because of that cramped space inside for the battery, I would recommend sticking with the same size as with the original blaster. Something you do gain though is a very quick access to the spring. Pull out a pin, fold down a hatch, and then I'm not gonna show you, but just turn the spring retainer using a flathead screwdriver 45 degrees and you should be able to remove the spring entirely. I know a lot of you play different kind of power levels. So with kids or HVZ, you might wanna drop the power level down. So it's a great feature to have quick spring swaps. Now, if you remember back to the original inverted scales, the fire select was this really cheap toggle switch, but now it's a much nicer, larger toggle and Ford is semi, middle is a three round burst, and to the back is full auto. Anyway, that pretty much covers all the changes over the original. If you want to know more about the inverted scales, I'll link my review video at the end of this one if you haven't seen that one before, and you'll learn a lot more about how this actually works. For this video though, now I want to get on with some testing. First up, let's shoot some darts over the chrono and see what they're hitting out of the muzzle. This will be seven 1.2 gram worker heavies and then seven 1.3 gram Sabre T darts. Uh, I will just mention to you guys, I'm using the XYL mags today. These are what I'd recommend for AEG blasters. They have a stronger spring in them than worker mags, so they do feed a little bit more reliably. Got seven worker heavies in there, and then seven of the heavier T-dots. Here goes the worker heavies. 238. 252. 253. 259. 248, 252, and the last one, 248. So now I'm onto the T-darts, which are a tiny bit heavier, so the FPS should be a little bit lower. 226, 224, 
235, 240, 230, 238, 233, and that's all seven of those. Importantly, uh, both dart types seem to be within spec of this B car. So let's give you the results and then move on to the accuracy test. Over the chrono, worker heavies averaged 250 feet per second, while the heavier Sabre T darts averaged 232, which absolutely checks out. The heavier darts go slower, right? That's how physics works. Now let's move on to the accuracy test. As usual, guys, I'm going to be sitting 30 meters away using a sandbag as a rest on that blue drum over there. And I'm going to be putting my sights on this white mark at the top of the target. By the time the darts reach 30 meters away, they should reach the center of the target due to gravity. Let's whack down this sandbag in amongst all the rain that's landed on that. Got worker heavies first, 15 of them. Then I'll reload the mag with T darts, which I'll do on semi auto. And then I'll also do the T darts on full auto just to make sure there's no jams. The first shot will be a dry fire just as it chambers the first dart. Here goes. Those are actually going pretty high on the target. Maybe this rail riser actually helps somehow with uh, elevation enough. Oh, it could be tilted slightly backwards or something. I mean forwards, not backwards. All right, that's 15 worker heavies. They did go higher than what I was expecting on the target, but I suspect this rail riser, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a screw at the back here, uh, which allows you to angle it up or down. Looks like they've angled it forward a bit. All right, now we got 15 of the 1.3 gram T darts loaded up. Again, because of how this blaster works, the first shot will be a dry fire as it chambers it. Let's see how it does, aiming at the exact same spot, even though we know we should probably be aiming dead center. Looks like no dart came out from that shot. I'll give the mag a quick tap and continue. That is the semi-auto T-darts fired. Let's load up 15 more and do it on full auto. I'm just making sure to load the darts so that the back of the foam is to the plastic rather than the tip because the tip's rubber, so that would rub more than the foam does. All right, I'm gonna do the T-darts on full auto to see if we get any jamming issues. That should be full auto, I think. All right, try and hold this as steady as we can. So it was really hard to see uh, where those shots were going. They were coming out so fast. I think it's about seven darts per second with this thing. The mag is completely empty. It fired every single dart fine, so two millimeters longer. It doesn't make a difference at all with the T darts in the AEG. What I will say though, is I'm guessing the dispersion will be a little bit larger than on semi-auto because this does have a bit of a recoil to it uh, when full autoing. So my point of aim probably shook all over the place there. Anyway, we'll compare semi of the worker heavy, semi of the T darts and full auto of the T darts. Worker heavy shown in yellow went pretty high up on the target thanks to the pre-adjustments to the pick rail riser that I didn't notice beforehand. They shot a very nice 40 centimeter spread despite the fact they're only coming out of the barrel at 250 FPS. And now moving on to the Sabre T-Dart heavies in red. They had a very similar grouping to the worker heavies. In fact, if I do some acrobatics with it in editing, they're basically mirror images of each other with maybe the slightest edge to T-Darts, but not enough 
enough to declare him a winner by any means like in my last few videos. It could be something about the lower FPS I'm using him at today, maybe the one gram tier darts would do better. But at least with this particular setup, there doesn't seem to be much difference between worker heavies and saber heavies. As for the full auto, as expected, the dispersion was pretty bad compared to the semi. Though examining it closer, the width is about the same as the other two groupings. It's just the height that's out by a lot. That makes me think it could actually be the blaster at fault here, having a little inconsistent FPS on the full auto mode, as opposed to my hands failing to keep the blaster steady. Because if that was the case, they'd also be all over the place side to side, right? The important thing though is that once I loaded the mags properly with the foam touching the plastic rather than the heads, there weren't any misfeeds or jams at all with the T-darts. They fired completely fine on a mag dump full auto despite being two millimeters longer. So I'd have to say they're safe to use in your AEGs as long as you're using appropriate mags like the XYL I used here or double sprung talons for the extra strength. But you have to use those for pretty much any other dart anyway. With that, it wraps up my video on the Bullpup inverted scales. It's been sitting on my desk since May, thanks to Phantom Toys. And I thought it was too cool not to make a video on, but I went to Singapore between then. Problem is, I have no idea where you can actually find it anymore or whether it's even still available. I'll put links to everything I can down below. And I did find something similar on principles if you wanna make a Bullpup inverted scales yourself. So perhaps check that one out if you have no luck with the Taobao link. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and all of that. Here's two other videos you might enjoy, including that original inverted scales one if you haven't seen that yet. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.